Hello, welcome everybody to the first live YouTube broadcast by Bridge and Political Owl. Today we're going to discuss a few things, um, rise of independence in the area, not just the area across Wales as well. Uh, we're going to also talk about the Arbed scheme and my brain's gone funny, I've forgotten the last one, which was oh, the council tax freeze. We're also going to be talking to, um, talking about other things and hope we'll decide on them later. But for now, I'm going to introduce you to three guests I've got today now, not the two I mentioned earlier. First of all, I'm going to bring in Mayor Stephen Bletso of Bridge End Town and Community Council and prospective candidate for the area. Welcome, Steve. Good evening, Luke. I didn't know I was going to be first. I was doing something on my phone. Apologies. No, no, no. It's okay. Okay. Next tonight, we have a new face to our stream. It's um, prospective candidate for Anasaldra and St. Bride's Minor, I believe. Uh, Leanne T Tahan Dyer. I hope I said that correctly. Hey, Luke. Good evening. <laughs> yeah, Leanne Tahan Dyer. Tahan Dyer. Thank you. Yeah. I put right. my glasses on because I'm going to have to start reading at some point and I can't read <laughs> without my glasses. So welcome to the live stream, Leanne. Um, Thanks, we're Nick. not going to talk to you about yourself and that today. I'll do that on a single video just you at some point. Lastly, I would like to bring in Councillor Martin Williams, quite a higher deputy chair at the moment and prospective county and community councillor for quite a higher. Welcome, Martin. Hey, how's it going, Luke? And, oh, and Steve and, and Leanne. Right. Well, let's get on to the first subject today. I'm going to start with the rise of independence. Um, in the last five years, we've had a rise of independence within the council, maybe not at the start, but we've, since then, a lot of councillors have left the party and joined it, joined or become independent and join. Alex Williams is an example of that, the current leader of the independent group in the council and the opposition. Um, but this year, there seems to be a lot of groups popping up in Bridge End. We've got Bridge End Town Independence, Coity Higher Independence, uh, and the Salva and St. Bride's Independence, which Leanne's part of, and so many others, because we've got the Llimby Independence and Porth Call Independence, and I'm sure there's more popped up around the area, which I haven't quite seen. But it's not quite unique to pretend. It seems to be happening all across Wales at the moment. Various areas, that I'm in Port Talbot, where I am, there's a couple of groups that have popped up. And people are, are saying, oh, these aren't independents. These are basically parties, but staying away from that party thing and calling them independents. I don't think that is the case, and I'll explain why later. And I'll let let's bring Stephen first to give us his opinions and his thoughts. Steve. Yeah, I mean, look, I'm I, I'm proudly independent. I'm very, very proudly independent. Um, I've never been a member of a political party. I've never been so minded to be. H however, that doesn't, you know, that doesn't. <laughs> is any different to me in a political movement um this this, this thing that's going on in Bridgend at the moment is not unique to here um you know we're, we're in touch with independent groups in the south of england you know and, and and we share experiences we share good ideas i mean just just as a, a really simple basic example um I'm not sure if all of us on this this call are part of a, a Facebook group for independent um, councillors all around the country, and and somebody in that group put a a post up about a, a resolution they'd had passed at their council, which showed that um, which which enabled sorry any motion council had to be put on a on a form, and you had to justify with the benefits to council. And you had to do all that. I'm just clicking that, and and. I took it off the way. I copied it word for word. I asked the author if I was allowed to put it in front of Bridgen Town Council, and it was approved. Now, surely that's good for democracy. It's not about somebody telling you oh, this is view on something. This is your stance on on anything. And I was going to say Brexit, but I want to try and stay away from issues like that. But it's it's like-minded people coming together for a common goal, 
Um, nothing more than nothing. Nothing more complex than that. Look, let, let's 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 speak about the elephant in the room. Martin and I are sat here with similar backgrounds. Do you know why we have that? Because we saw your interview with Ian Spiller and thought oh, that looks effective, and we've worked together to background. Nothing. Founding councillors coming together, sharing resources, sharing experiences, sharing views, and working positively together. And and I and I don't understand this negativity that surrounds it. I don't understand this whole thing of you're not independent because you're sharing a platform with somebody else who's independent. You're a party. No, we're not. Martin and I disagree all the time. I've not had the opportunity to disagree with Leanne yet, but I'm sure that'll happen. <laughs> you know, yeah. it, 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 it'll come. It'll happen. And and, yeah. and we'll respectfully do so, all of us. You know, it's not it's not about right, Leanne. I think when you're talking to somebody, you tell them that's not, that's not what this is about, Luke. This is about what's good for the people of Bridgend County, for the areas that we serve. We're going to have different. Myself, Martin, yeah, we're going to have different, have different solutions, but we share this commonality. We share this. I mean, I think we. I mean, we've all got a WhatsApp open. Not yourself, Luke, but Martin, Leanne, and myself. Last night we were talking about being members of the Take That Fan Club or the Spice Girls Fan Club. And we all were. We just we share <laughs> things. Yeah, apparently so. <laughs> but but well, uh, people are seeing this life outside political parties. That's the key thing. You don't have to. You don't have to pay a monthly subscription. You don't have to subscribe to this national ideology in order to be a councillor. You can be yourself, and other people who are like you will stand by you and support you and help you and share in your victories and console you when you're having a down day. That, that, that's, it's nothing more than that. Yeah. Um, people in chat, I've got, we've got six viewers, which is amazing for the, for, for the first chat. Is the audio and video okay if somebody could just post a comment and say yes or no? And Because I know Steve keep, keeps breaking up. I'm not sure if it's his stream or mine. If it's any consolation, Luke. He's breaking up for me as well, so it's... Uh, You're it's not breaking Steve up, so I log. think he's... I, I tell you what, I can, I can try and log in. If you want to talk to the others, I'll try and log into a different computer. Okay, that, that, that's no problem. Um, what Steve was talking about okay. was, um, is what got me on to Leanne yesterday was the post that you shared on Facebook um, about... There was this list of councillors who are former parties, and Steve was one of those that they said was part of a former party, and he just said he isn't. It said on there that you were part of Labour, Leanne, and you were part of Take That Club with your quick yeah. back, which is thing. So were you part of the Labour Party at one point? Yeah, I was. I make no, uh, no bones about it. I would say that's probably publicly uh, available information. Um, and I became disillusioned with the party. And once that happens, you're within your rights to leave and you can choose to do yeah. nothing. You can choose to join another party or, you know, you can choose to go to go your own way. Um, and I don't necessarily think it's uh, the got yeah, that uh, the gotcha moment that um, that people think it is, because I would say it's hardly surprising that people who are interested in politics have been members of political parties previously. Um, I don't think that's particularly surprising. Um, and I think questioning maybe why people might have left parties and why people might be going independent might be more a more productive thing to do. Mm -hmm. um, like Steve was saying, you know, there's probably 35 people um, in the WhatsApp chat group. Um, am I going to agree politically with most of them on any given subject? No, but there are issues where we will all agree. Um, Speaking about local politics, it affects, you know, everything we do here. It's not necessarily a, the the dichotomy between right and left. It's to do with what you think is in the best interest of the people you represent. Um, and I don't think you need to be in a party to do that. And I think um, the other independent perspective candidates have shared loads of resources with me that I wouldn't have had, ha had access to otherwise or would have had to do loads of my own research, having never stood uh, for election before in order to get to the point I'm at I'm at now um, so I see it as only a positive thing and I genuinely am quite baffled as, as to how anyone can see it as a negative to be honest with you 
um, I think it's just misconceptions, really. Yeah, well, um, it, it's that, and I can I can see people. I can see the logic behind people see, thinking that independents are working together and they think the same, but it, it's not the case. A case in point, last year, and Martin can, can can talk about can talk about this is. Um, we had a vote in the community council at the end of last year in regards to expanding the number of councillors in Coiti, uh, mm -hmm. community councillors in Coiti. And we had a difference of opinion and we voted completely different ways, both yeah. of us. Yes, it, it, it was upsetting. Martin didn't want to... What upsetting? I, I, mean, did, I mean, it was different. Well, wasn't not it? upsetting. It was different, but... We didn't fall out over it. We had our own opinions. We respected each other's opinion, and we've gone on. Well, you know, we? you know, in and a it's strange not the way, first time we've done that. In our own little way, um, it was a similar sort of um, vote uh, as caused the deselections uh, from Labour five years ago. Because what yeah. we were, for those who aren't aware, what we were voting on was uh, we'd been consulted by BCBC about. Um, uh, creating new new seats uh, for for Coyte because Coyte is now much bigger than 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 it was, and uh, I and a couple of others voted along the lines that it should be split according to voters, according to the electric size, and others disagreed because they felt it was it was being overly harsh, perhaps on 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 the other wards that 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 um, would lose a seat. Um, but as Luke says, we got through it. It stung a bit. I didn't really have to like lose yeah. it. <laughs> it didn't. No one fell out about it. You know, it was that was democracy. But you know, look what happened. All right, this was only community council level. Look what happened with the you know that merger with the Vale or merger with Port Talbot, and which was kind of the same in a way because it was all about administrative matters. Uh, uh, of course, way too hard, didn't they? You know, and the Labour Party booted out. Uh, Six of them won, was it half a dozen half a dozen members is yeah, it? Or, 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 not members but booted them out from 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 their seats so yeah I mean, we vote differently and we think differently but 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 you know um it's a council it's not a it's not a it's not a it's not a rubber stamping machine you know no. and i think in in Coyte, and i don't know about and it's over where Leanne is and, and, and Steve in, in Gentile. We do our thinking in the meeting, by and large. You see the deliberations in the meeting. Yeah. We, we don't come, you know, we don't go away, come up with our plans, go to a meeting and then just go bang, bang. That's that's approved. You, you see the workings out in front of you. And I think that's how it should be. And it's much easier to see those working out now. If people don't want to go out in weather like it is today to a council meeting, we're doing them online as well now, so people can join us online to watch the council meetings. So, and it, it's not like, and some of it is fairly drab and fairly boring, but there are some it, quite exciting parts, especially when you're planning for building something like a new park or taking over the asset of yeah. a new park, like we have recently in um, Jocelyn Terrace, I believe it was. Yeah. Was it Jocelyn yeah. Terrace? Yeah. Jocelyn so, Terrace Road, yeah, yeah. So we've done something a bit novel there. But I mean, going back to your original question about you know, the rise of independence and and that that sort of nonsense we saw from from the Labour Party yesterday, um, I, I you know I think just you know people yeah disillusioned the parties. I, I think I think national parties have become particularly polarized polarized uh, in in the last sort of ten years and and, and more so. Um, I don't think they necessarily offer solutions to um local issues i sound like the league of gentlemen now don't i but you know they don't they don't <laughs> they don't uh, provide solutions that are necessarily fit for coity or fit for lichard and and, and you know and Oudra's needs will, will be different as well and, and it, it never occurred to me you know when i when i stood for election first of all back in 2016 16. i was but yeah i was by myself um i i went for it uh and yeah, it would have been really good to have some support. Not uh, clearly, friends and family supported me, but to have other um, councillors in independent of party politics who I could have bounced things off uh, um, would have been really invaluable. So you know, why wouldn't you work together? It makes it, you know, it doesn't make you a party. It just it's just support. And and you know, when, when you see some, sorry, I'm, I'm taking over. Now. I was quiet for a bit. Yeah. But when, when you see some of that nonsense that we had yesterday, you know, Leanne shared that. But if you haven't been through that sort of thing before, it can be pretty off 
off-putting and it can be, you know, quite unsettling, which, which is, of course, what they try to do. Uh, the Conservatives seem to be less so, but Labour certainly, they, they go on this attack, they try to wrong foot you, they try to upset you because they want to pick you off one by one. But if, if you know, if you stand, not stand together as a, you know, as a team necessarily, but if you're standing looking out for each other, then you, you've got that ability to withstand that sort of uh, tactic. Yeah, if you go on too long, Martin, I do have the ability to mute you. <laughs> um, yeah, and I think, well, that's what I put in my post, uh, in my comments to the post yesterday, was that the parties like Labour and the Tories, not so much the Lib Dems or Plaid Cymru, seem to miss the whole point of us grouping up. It's not about we believe the same thing or we want the same thing or we're going to do the same thing. It's about sharing resources, having people guide you through what can be a complicated process. Last, what, five years ago, if we didn't have David Unwin, we would have been in quite the thing because he, our, all our paperwork, most, some of us got things wrong on there and without his, adv his advice and direction, we would it would have been invalid and we might not have made the cut for the standing council. Can I just pop in there, Luke? I mean, yeah. I, I obviously dropped off a little bit and, and I found yesterday's post bizarre for, for a number of different reasons. Um, one, shock horror, people who are engaged in a political process in one time in their life have been part of a political party. Shock, horror, wow. I mean, that's, that's not hold the front page. <laughs> but, but it was almost, I mean, half, half of the people they listed... They were publicly stated, well, they used to be members of our party and they left. And, and, yeah. Martin's, already, and Martin's already touched on what happened in my stake. You know, all, all of those ex-Labour councillors didn't disappear. You know, deselecting them from a Labour party doesn't stop you from being a councillor. It concentrates uh, your mind on what you want to do. They stand as Lindy independence. And I think you'd talk to any one of them and say they're actually happier now. But, but in, in relation to what a, an independent network is, there are laws, there are rules, there are requirements yeah. of us as, as people who stand for public office. When you do this for the first time, you've got no way of knowing what they are. Now, you go onto Facebook and you go to search who your candidate is. And I use that word very specifically, candidate, because they don't exist at this moment in time. No. Everybody who's put themselves forward is a prospective candidate. Now, everybody who stands with the support of Bridgen County Independence, their website is currently legal. Because their, their Facebook page will say prospective candidate for. That's the legal requirement. Now, what, what, what do these people who criticize us want? Do they want prospective candidates to not understand or know what the laws are and to put themselves in breach of electoral law? At the moment that their nomination gets accepted, they have a whole other amount of requirements placed on them about stating what, who their agent is, who their promoter is, all of these yeah. things. You don't find this. They don't teach you this stuff. You have to learn it. Now, now our network is primed and it's ready to go. We had a, a Teams meeting, what, an hour and a half ago, where one of the candidates wants to know, what's the font size I need to put on my legal imprint? Because you can't find that online. Oh. We know because you've mentioned David Unwin's name because he told us. Yeah. And we pay it forward and we help people. That's all we do, and, and that's possibly what scares them. Because what we do is we empower good people to be a credible opponent. And, and uh, lack of credible opponents is bad for democracy. I'd because... just like to point out, before you go on, Steve, that it's not a quid pro quo situation where you help them and they then expect them to support whatever is put forward by you or Martin or myself or Leanne or that in return. No. Um, it go your own conscience. Go what you think is best for your constituents who you represent, or what your constituents have asked you to do. Mm -hmm. So that's what it is. It's not a pr quid pro quo like you get in parties. And I spoke to Ian Spiller like about this on the thing. And he said the Lib Dems never forced him to vote a certain way, which is great, which is fair enough. But we can see from Labour uh, in the council that they are made to vote a certain way. And if not, as we saw five years ago, they get deselected, which was quite ironic because what they were trying to do was illegal anyway, and they were told not to merge with the veil. They couldn't do it themselves. So they deselected six candidates who followed their conscience, 
rightly, and maybe what their constituents wanted, and then got rid of them, and a few of them got back in as independents, like Rhys Penhale Thomas. Uh, Ross Penhale Thomas, sorry. Brilliant. Um, and he's one of the leading figures. He was the mayor of Bridgend at one point. My stag. Uh, was it my stag? Oh, I'm sure it's my stag. And they've deselected him. It, it, it makes no sense to me. And I think they parties would... In, okay, at a national level, I can see the importance of parties sticking together and thing. Um, maybe that. But at local elections... It should always be about what your constituents want, what's best for your ward, because it has much more of an Im impact than national politics does. So anybody want to jump in now and carry on talking? Yeah, I was just going to say at the start of this process, coming from that sort of environment, the first meeting that I had with Steve, Steve was telling me about... Um, Virginia County Independents, what they stand for, what they are, and uh, I let them carry on. And then at the end of it, I said, yeah, okay, but what what's in it for you? What do you want from me? What, you know? And uh, he said, well, nothing, just to, you know, just to vote how you want. You know, and coming from a system that's used to, you know, you pay in your 10% contributions, mm -hmm. you vote in how people want, you, you know, stick into the, to the organised script on things. Um, it took... I'd say a couple of days for me to think, oh, okay, yeah, he's, you know, he's not actually going to get anything out of this. Um, no. So I suppose I do kind of get maybe where the cynicism comes, that it's, it is different totally to how parties operate, which I guess is why it's so frustrating to me um, to see people label BCI as a party um, when it's just so different to any any other, any other organisation, I guess. And I think a party is a very interesting concept anyway, because... I, I don't understand sometimes what the attack is. So if you're all working together or you're all, you know, standing up for each other like we are, well, that's fine. So is that a party? Is that what they mean? Or do they mean, an, or do they mean you know, a properly affiliated party which, which is registered with the Electoral Commission? Or, because we could do that in, in some ways, in some ways. And it's been discussed back, way back in Change for Bagenda yeah. before we met Luke. Uh, we, we talked about would it be advantageous to form a party purely for the sole reason is a BCBC level you can have your party name on the on mm -hmm. the um, yeah. on the ballot, you know. So, so no, we we could have played the game. We could have said, "Oh, we'll do that," and we'll play the game and do that. But you know, so, so we didn't do that, and 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 we don't have subs, and we don't have whips and all the rest. You know, we just don't do that. And as I said, we we could have played that game. Um, but decided not to because it's all down to the strength of the candidates as well. It's it's all about the individuals. Well, we did discuss it after the election as well last last uh, five years ago, and we decided well that's not what we want because as a party we would be expected to vote the same way, and have the same opinions and form the same um, ideas. Yeah, but, and name, that's not what we yeah, wanted. Yeah, we wanted the indiv yeah. we wanted the individual to be the focus what we're doing we're not doing it because we want to be a party or sorry i'm not this year because i'm not standing it's a focus to share resources because as ian spiller said in his interview if he had to do it as an independent and the other four who we stand who grouped together up in um lala's uh broadlands and that they'd have to each pay out for a different leaflet which means five leaflets coming through your door from five different candidates, whereas grouping together, it cuts down the cost, it cuts down the recycling that you have to do as well. So, um, but the biggest thing to me is they criticise people like BCI, like myself, which I had the other day with two Labour members, and that that's fair enough, I don't mind being criticised, but they've got to... What, why are people leaving their parties to stand as independents? Is there something wrong? Because it's happening more and more, as we've seen over the last five years, and even now. So anybody want to take that one up? Well, it, it, I mean, it, 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 it's, just, it's just a strange, strange situation. And perhaps, I don't know, I've, I've never been the member of a party, and, and I don't know if Leanne's better place to answer this, but... 
there's a there's a viable alternative because look the reality is if somebody wants to stand in in the new Bridgen central ward as a a true in let's call them let's use their own words a true independence because that's that's the, that's the words they use don't join those lot be a true independent fine go and hand deliver 5000 leaflets because that's that's the reality yeah i i stand with colleagues who i share a lot of opinions with we don't tell each other how to vote. Here's a perfect example. I know I'm going off scattergun a little bit here. Don't worry. The Gen Town Council held its budget um, vote uh, in December. Now, I'm standing with Steve Easterbrook in Bridgen Central um, at BCBC level. Steve and I voted different ways on how we fund our precept for this year now. Now, does that stop me standing with Steve in May? Or does that reinforce the fact that we're both actually independently speaking different people who had a different belief on a certain vote? The yeah. way Steve the way Steve Easterbrook voted won the day. And, and you know, going back to what Martin said, did I go back into my corner and cry because my vote didn't go through? No, it didn't. I, I pulled up my big boy pants and thought, that's democracy. The other side of the argument won the day, and we moved on to the next agenda item. And I'll still stand with Steve in May. And we'll still be unified in delivering 5,000 leaflets and disagreeing on fundamental aspects. Because that's what being a councillor actually is. Hmm. It's about this. <laughs> we laughed. I think a lot of us laughed when they had that meeting about this. I know we're going to come on to council tax. When the cabinet met and every single one of them publicly stated they're predisposed, not predetermined. It's a legal <laughs> It's a legal requirement of all of us as councillors to enter a meeting with an open mind. Yeah. If we're talking about being a member of a party or not, it's actually unlawful for councillors to whip their members and tell them how they're going to vote because they have to go into a meeting open to having their minds changed. Let's not play games with semantics on making declarations at the start of a meeting. But no, nobody will ever stand up and say, you know, it goes on in Parliament, it goes on everywhere. You have to enter a meeting of a predisposed position open to having your minds changed. End of argument. If I Every be... single councillor should be independent. And... I mean, if, what you came up with then, if, if, sorry, Luke, I mean, if, if, if I can just come in, I mean, at the risk of being slightly mischievous, I, I think, you know, <laughs> they, they all said predisposed, not, 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 not predetermined, because our group highlighted their predetermination <laughs> uh, and and um no wonder they, they i wouldn't say hate hate's a strong word but no wonder no wonder they get frustrated with us because we call them out time and time again and why do we do that because we are all residents of 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 progen county borough who are sick and tired of the nonsense oh, you know, simple yeah. as that i think an example of what you were saying about um council members even well our ministers of the uk parliament supposed to go in with an open mind to have yes. their mind changed yeah because if we go back to i know it's a divisive subject brexit madeline moon who bridge end voted to leave europe madeline moon stated that she will never she will always vote against it and did so that's not going in with your mind open to change and quite a lot of ministers went in both the same ways thinking yes yeah, stating well i want brexit i'm going to vote for it regardless or in parliament after the vote we had and so it's if they're supposed to go in with an open mind state, stating something like that isn't going in with an open mind is going in with a predetermination of i'm going to do this regardless of what's said so it's such a, and I think it's a bigger problem at local level because you see it time and time again and it has a bigger effect time and time again on the local, a more immediate effect, I, I suppose, rather than something that's long term on the local people. I think, Nick, I mean, I, I think, and I know you're going to come on to it, I think um, that sort of, um, shall we call it, behaviour leads to things like Arbed. Yeah, a, um, a, 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 a dominant party. I know we're going to come on to a dominant party of whatever politics. It doesn't matter who have been in charge for generations, um, effectively being a single party, um, a single party state. Um, if you want to get on, you have to be loyal. 
if you, and not question. And that's what leads you to in extremist situations like Arbit, in my opinion. But, you know, it could be any one of another thing. I think that's just, you know, that is just now the, the hot topic. And, and and you can see, you can draw a line from what happened with Arbit through, and you can see, well, you know, people fearful of, of, of their positions, people fearful of standing up, in my opinion. Sorry, I, I know you're going to come on to Arbit, but I think it, no. I think it's really interlinked, absolutely. Yeah, it's a good segue. And I did forget to say this at the start, Street. If you want to ask a question while we're talking about the subject or make a comment, just go ahead and do it and we'll answer as best we can. But um, I, I think I think in relation to parties, I think Leanne's got the most immediate experience of that. Yeah. And I don't know what that was. But, I mean, I, I, I don't know if you've ever experienced that, Leanne, or not. I, I, I don't know your, your situation. Um, It's more a case of there's a lot of being talked over being shouted down in meetings because we've already decided a stance on a b or c and that's the end of it mm. so you know whereas um i'm a community counselor um obviously it's a very different kettle of fish we've got a really small precept um but all the counselors come to the meeting you know we talk about things we hash it out we might not disagree by the end of it but everyone gets their opinion heard everyone's allowed to speak and we come to decisions far more as a collective than we do, you know, the kind of one or two ringleaders, if you like, who set the pace and and then it's show up and put up, basically, um, otherwise. So, you know, it, it it's a, you know, obviously I'm um, not affiliated to any party on the, on the community council either, and it didn't cross my mind to be, um, because the way to make an impact in, in the local decisions, it, it doesn't matter what, you know, who you vote for or what flag you stand in front of, um, it's how you vote on on the issue in front of you, which is to do with where you live or where you work and where you have a vested interest. So, yeah, that's my experience. Great. Right. Um, since Martin's already mentioned it, and I was hoping a couple of questions may come up during Leanne speaking there that I could have asked the guests or answered myself if I could. Um, but we'll move on to our bet now. Now, it's kicked kicked up again today i had this as a subject all week anyway because the report came out was it a month ago and with me being away for nearly four months i had to start with this because it's probably the biggest thing that's happened in bridge county borough council in its time um for good or bad um but the leader of the council hugh david was on bbc politics this morning and do you think he did a good job, anybody who saw it there? I was a bit confused about, um, there were a couple of questions about um, when specifically he may have become aware of certain things and his answer was, oh, it was later on. I mean, we're talking about sort of a 10 year time scale here. So, so when was the later? Was that three years in? Was that five years in? Was that, you know, in 2019 when it first got referred? I don't know. I would have liked to have seen some more. I would have liked to have seen the journalist push him a bit more on what he meant by later. Yeah, well, he said later, but he also said in, in the interview there were a few complaints before beforehand mm. as the work was but going on. they didn't on. join them up. No, so, yeah. and so there should have been, I think, and we, I'll speak on the report in a bit. Um, I know you watched it, Steve. Do you have a comment? Yeah, I, I, I didn't know it was going to be on this morning. Somebody sent me a message about five minutes into it, and, and I found it a little bit bizarre that the story came back up again this morning. And, and this this comes down to bad management. And it, look, this is this is bad PR management. Yeah. The leader of the council was offered the opportunity to put his case forward when the original story went out. And, and the failure to grasp that extends the, the agony for this administration because... You know, in, in, in press terms, the story was done. I mean, the BBC haven't gone looking for the follow-up. This has all come about because BBC, BBC have obviously gone back and said, you know, we're ready to talk now. And it's re reignited the story again, which from a press, you know, what's it called, emergency press management is, is just awful. Um, but it's... Um, like you, you'll never, ever take away the scandal element of this and no matter how they try and spin right. it and I, and I don't think they are trying to spin it i think they've they've had no choice but to hold their hands up and say we messed up here um but but this isn't a surprise to us and, and this does kind of come back to something martin said earlier 
Bridgend County Independents have been pushing this for years. Um, yeah. and, and, and we've made no apologies for doing it because we've known the details for years. And I'm, I'm not over-exaggerating. You know, I, I became aware of concerns over this before I stood back in 2017. You know, I was I was contacted yeah. by somebody um, back then and I, I had emails back then. So how, you know, the leader of the council says he only became aware at the later stages. Is he saying I knew before him as, as, a, as a member of the public? Um, I don't know. And... Um, this is a, this is a stain. This is a stain on BCBC, and uh, and there is no element of this that that can be justified in any way, shape, or form. Fundamentally, people have been made to live in in unacceptable living conditions uh, yeah. for too long. Yeah, I, you know, we've spoken to to residents who have no, not hyperbole. They've paid ten thousand pounds plus to remedy their houses. I personally have seen uh, invoices and warranties for boilers that were never installed. I've got them on my computer. You know, th th this this is what 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 frustrates me is I remember watching a BCBC cabinet meeting when this when they first acknowledged this and they acknowledged it as a black mark. And then we waited another eighteen months for this report that had already been completed. And you know, people have been forced to live through two winters in lockdown in houses and and i'm talking genuine tears of people and yeah you know th this whole question of you know and and, and hugh aranka davis who's one of the best um press-minded uh, members that that labor have he was sent in to straight bat it when he said well you know the question over compensation is from whom well the answer is from somebody because those residents res yeah. deserve something from this they they are out of pocket to a huge amount it's made people unwell and, and compensation has to come from somewhere and somebody needs to front up on this because the, the, it's an absolute disgrace. And, you know, we can go into the details of the contract award and whatever you want, Luke, and it's so layered, but, but, but at every level, an absolute disgrace. Yeah. Um, going on his interview this morning, I think maybe they were thinking, oh, this would be good for us PR because we're announcing three and a half million pounds we've announced this week three and a half million pounds to repair the thing so they, he probably thought it was going to be good pr but i thought at, at the start you could see he, he was reading from a script and he wasn't very coherent he was stuttering he was all over the place with it he was had, he seemed to have no confidence in anything he was saying but what got to me was um there was when it came and they were talking about he, he wants money from the UK government to help mm -hmm. pay for this, when, it yes, originally the money was supplied to the Welsh government from the UK to do their own housing scheme, uh, to do their own warm weather housing scheme and energy efficiency. So why should UK government pay for it? And then he equated, oh, it's failed all over the country, as if it's not <laughs> their fault that it was just because it was that scheme and it was bad. And he said, well, there was many failures across the country. And I'm thinking, well, that's quite sickening, thinking that way that you haven't really done anything wrong because it was set up to fail anyway. So, Martin, I'm guessing you're next because you unmuted and... Uh, yeah, I mean, where, where to start? So your question, did he do a good job this morning? Well, it depends who, who no. you're talking to. Did he do, do, did he do a good job for all of his opponents? Yeah, absolutely, because it was a shocking display. I mean, it was just appalling. Um, did he do a good job of protecting uh, the reputation of BCBC? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. But then we can talk whether he, he, he he's the sort of guy who you would want to put in, in front of the media in, in, in a difficult situation like that um, or not. But, but his background means that he was never going to, be able to do a good job because because he was deputy he's been leader since 2016 so he's yeah. been a leader you know, a leader since this 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 scandal emerged uh, when the previous ceo um uh, you know instigated the, the, the um instigated the, the, the audit and the investigations and he was deputy yeah. leader um at, at the time of the, of the contract award and the works so regardless of how good a media performer he is he was never going to be able to front up to this because he, I'm afraid, by association, uh, 
<laughs> you can't say he was a, you know he was the leader or deputy leader during all this time and and, and it, it was never he, he he can't defend the indefensible he can't no. defend the indefensible and, and and as steve says you know it, it is indefensible these are people's lives people's you know uh, people's houses have been ruined how many how, I mean, how many tears how how many how many cold winter nights you know it's just appalling you know and and, and some of you may know I, my my job is involved with 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 the procurement and management of large contracts you know far larger than this but there's a failure on every level when i read the report you know I, i'm not entirely predisposed to to bcbc i have a pretty low opinion of the way they operate and, and and I feel there needs to be a lot of change. But I even I was staggered, staggered at the failure at every level. Um, where where's the insurance? Where's their public liability yeah. insurance to pay for this? Where's the professional indemnity insurance? Where, where are the bonds that they should have had? None, none of this was in place. Because even if they had got bust, it shouldn't have mattered because then insurer would have picked it up. I mean, it's just wrong on every level, uh, and to say it's a scandal is 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 not an overreaction. This is appalling, and and I think it's it's the problem is there's this trope, isn't there? There's this, this trope about grubby Welsh councils. It's been going on for years, grubby Welsh councils, and and we've all heard it. And then things like this come along, and you go, bloody hell, that's true. It's 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 an appalling situation, and it's you know it's bad for the people, it's bad for BCBC, and it's bad for the reputation of, of local government, frankly. And yeah. and, so and something that, that you said, my point made clear. And, and something that you said, Luke, about you know they they maybe hoped to spin it and say, oh, this is three and a half million pounds of money to fix it. That's three and a half million, three and a half million pounds of public mm -hmm. money. Yeah. And you, you, can, you can spin it any way you want. Um, you know, eight hundred and fifty-five thousand coming directly from reserves at BCBC. And again, not wanting to jump forward, but last year we were told we can't use reser reserves to save us from council tax rises, but we can use reserves to, to pay for this. And it does have to come from somewhere. You know, yeah. this money has to come from somewhere. But the remainder of that money is not free money. It's money that's not going to go on education from the Welsh government, or it's money that's not going to go on something, or transport infrastructure. It's public money. And, and the whole catalogue of errors, and, and, and I use the word errors, advisedly because some errors are deliberate and, and when you look at the detail three other companies put an interest in in tendering for this and weren't followed up and and, and this whole thing and, and this is something this is this is this is me with my my nuance of language and, and perhaps my my nature the whole statement of this is an isolated incident and it hasn't been repeated is not a good thing it makes it worse because what they're saying is an isolated incident with something out of the ordinary happened, happened with a BCBC cabinet member. That no. makes it worse. If this was Joe Public and this was an accident, but no, 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 this was a company linked to a cabinet member. That is not an excuse. It's not a defence. And it makes the situation worse than they're trying to pretend it is. I, 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 and Steve, I, if I could come in here. It, 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 sorry, sorry, Luke. On that point, and we talked about Hugh David's performance and the rest of it. And I said that he was, you know, he very difficult for him to front up, no matter how good he was. He, as leader, on the day, you know, in the in the cabinet meeting where they all lined up uh, Soviet style to apologise, um, that very same cabinet meeting, that cabinet appointed the cabinet, the former cabinet member, the one whose company ruined all his houses. They appointed him as a school governor on that same day so they'd already had the report we hadn't seen it at this point but they'd seen it and the report doesn't pull its punches with regard to the conduct of of that former cabinet member they admit he admitted on the thing this morning that they'd referred the whole thing to to the ombudsman and and uh, the police so they were clearly the council felt so strongly about the conduct of this cabinet member uh, that they uh, that they referred him to the ombudsman but yet, on the same day, appointed him as a school governor. Yeah, it, it's staggering. And from my understanding, and I may be completely and utterly wrong on this, but back then when the contracts were awarded, this cabinet member was the cabinet member for communities, mm -hmm. which is the department that would be responsible for this scheme entirely. Correct. 
to, to, to bring to bring it back to your your the statement earlier about deselected Labour members in the Flinvy, yeah. we know that two Labour Flinvy councillors at that time raised concerns to the then leader, and the cabinet member was not moved uh, out of the cabinet. He was moved to a different portfolio, and then those councillors were deselected. Well, there we go. But it's it's like they've stated that there's no other problems with the procurement with procurement process on anything else they can find but they looked at 10 contracts in the report they said they 10 contracts i don't know how many they've done since they should have looked back all the way all the way to the start of bridge and county borough council and i think they should have audited every procurement they've done well because 10 doesn't sound a lot and i'm guessing because they have to go for a procurement process over a certain amount of money they spend. Is it 20,000 or something like that? Anybody know? No. Uh, but, but, but again, Luke, that, that makes it worse, not better. If you've got 11 contracts and there's a problem with the award of one of them and one of them is yeah. into a cabinet member, that doesn't mean that the 10 were great. It means that the one was worse. Because why was yeah. that mistake on that one contract? What happened? Yeah, well, personally, if and this goes to a question, question that's come up from Amy McConnell, and I hope others will answer it. She, she does say, so what are you as prospective BCBC councillors going to do? Thanks for the perspective part, which is correct. If you get in, are you going to agree now to a public inquiry, figure out everyone involved? Personally, if I was standing, I'm not standing this year, um, Personally, if I was standing, yes, I would have a public inquiry on on that, but I'd also have a, an inquiry on every contract that's been done in the last 24 years, just to make sure that this isn't something that's been in, endemic within the council. So anybody else want to? I, I, I can't speak for everybody here, Luke, but no. for me, if, if, I, if I'm elected to BCBC, I would want to work within an administration that would guarantee this would never happen again. And, that, and that's, that's, how you, that's how you work positively moving forward. Because yes, yes, you can have a public inquiry. That would, that would cost a lot of money. And, and yeah. the only people who would probably benefit is the new administration because it would allow them to point a lot of fingers and say, look at them, they were rubbish and blah, blah, blah. So ultimately, any new administration would be the beneficiaries of that. But for me, I, I certainly want to work within an administration that would, would, would get, would, would just ensure that could never happen again. And and not and, and there's two aspects to that. One, the the potential impropriety that's happened. You know, the the public service investigation was ongoing, and I don't know if we'll ever know the outcome of that now because of the the sad circumstances that that happened last year. But people need to have faith within their local authority. It's a third of a billion pounds a year organisation. The fact that this has come out, this, this, it, it is a scandal. And, and yeah. I, I certainly want to move forward to make sure that would never, ever... And, and again, you know, when Hugh Aranka davis was on Politics Wales, he was saying about lessons. Lessons learned is quite a glib thing to say to people who've suffered. And I, I find it quite insulting. But I would like to be part of an administration and would say, that's happened, that's what happened, the public can know what's happened, but we would do everything we can to make sure that never happens again, ever. Because it, 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 it shouldn't ever happen like that, ever again. Either... I mean, I'm happy for Leanne to... Because to, 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 yeah. she's going to start, I won't stop. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean... A public inquiry is obviously in the interest of the public as well to see whilst there has been alleged wrongdoing by one former cabinet member who is now no longer with us. There are obviously a lot of other people involved who were either not following their usual procurement process or this was established customer practice uh, when they were awarding some of their contracts. Um, so there are other people involved who, you know, need to answer for, for what happened, maybe need to lose reconsider current positions um, and I think that would all be borne out of a public inquiry which whilst would be expensive would be the only way of satisfying the public that, that you've got onto the root of the problem and to make sure it, it doesn't happen again a lot of um, bad things can happen when good people look the other way that that's all you need to do yeah so, I, I, yes, and so to build on, on what Leanne said there I, 
I mean, uh, I, a public inquiry, I don't know if that's the right thing or whether it's even possible. I would certainly want, I would um, get an external body in. So whether that's a public inquiry or whether it is a, an ex-judge or something like that to come in and thoroughly investigate this issue. Because, I, I, I mean, a dimension that I touched on here as well is it's clear that we know what went wrong with the mechanics and the process, but we yeah. don't know how much political pressure played uh, a part in this. We don't know how much influence, how much fear, how were officers fearful of, of, a, of, a, of yeah. a powerful cabinet member. We don't know. That hasn't been addressed at all. I, I've got real culture. I've got real concerns about the culture of BCBC, uh, mm. not just in this. Um, they 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 seem to treat uh, the public as an inconvenience. Uh, you know, I think there's some real, real cultural problems in in BCBC, um, but, uh, and I've heard some interesting things about a culture of fear within. Um, and of course, this happens with the dominant party. But in terms of specific things, if I was fortunate enough to be in an influential position, um, you know, having been elected, I I would I would give senior officers a hundred days to tell the truth. You have a hundred days to tell me what's going on in this place, because if I find out something after those hundred days are passed, then you're toast. You're gone. We have a hundred days, whether you call it bringing out your dead, I've heard it called that, <laughs> bring out your dead, or or, or truth and reconciliation. You've got a hundred days to come clean. If is there another R bed in here? I want to know. Yeah. And then beyond that, we, we we need to you know the whole thing needs restructuring anyway. But but on 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 the on the matter of of restoring trust, that there, there needs to be proper whistleblowing procedures, confidential uh, lines. Um, I I think with BCI we, we post went out a couple of months back, and we talked about having citizens panels. So there are scrutiny committees yeah. uh, of of councillors looking at uh, who scrutinise policy. I think the cabinet should, on a regular basis, front up to the public, and in a forum like this, and they should be pulled in front of the public. And whether you know we can go to hybrid meetings or what have you, whether that's for uh, every two months, three months, whatever is appropriate, and asked anything, anything, mm -hmm. and, and they, 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 we, we can't just move on uh, and say, well, it's fine now; it doesn't happen anymore. There has to be a wholesale change. In, in 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 the way BCBC interacts with the public, and there can be no more place to hide. They can't be any more hiding. Yeah. Well, uh, pick, pick, picking up on that, Mark. Don't forget that the Kia contract never went in front of full council. The the Kia contract was agreed oh, by cabinet oh, and, and ratified. Yeah, it yeah. wasn't scrutinised by full council. That's how dominant that the is. cabinet is, and, and and that's when things go wrong. And and they have thirty nine. Say that again, 39 sorry. out of 50. I think I think Labour had 39 out of 54 councillors at that point, pre-2017. Well, it didn't matter, did it? Yeah, it, 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 it everything so went through. There was no, yeah, there was no, there was no scrutiny, was there? But Martin's right. You know, officers answer to politicians or ca elected councillors, and elected councillors answer to the public. Yeah, the, the, the BCBC is an organisation answer to its ratepayers. They they are their investors. They are the people they serve. And let's get away from dominant people in dark rooms who pre-agree what they're going to agree in a cabinet meeting, you know, in a, in a meeting that can't be scrutinised. As you said earlier, the working's out. How did you come to that decision? Well, we all yeah. went into a room and we all decided on what we were going to... I, before we stood, this is, this, is, this is going to sound bizarre, but totally believable. Before we all stood in 2017, I went to a, um, a community council meeting once that had a dominant party in, and they had a discussion over something. Can't even remember what it was about now, but they forgot to take the vote. Oh, because they'd already all decided what they were going to what, what they were voting for. I was sat was... in the public gallery and they forgot to take the vote. Wasn't that my step? No. Or, or up in the garage somewhere. I it was know. it was oh, up oh. in the garage somewhere. But they, yeah. they, they forgot to vote because they were so set in the way they knew where the meeting was going. Yeah. There was no working zone. There sat, were no minutes. I I, I sat on a one with a with a co option. Uh, Luke may have been there, or no, maybe not. Um, that gives you a hint. Uh, and uh, I think it was for my seat. Straight to the wasn't it? <laughs> Probably was. So they proceeded. For my right, seat. The vote, then. And, then, and they and they voted. And 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 I put my hand up. And it's a point of order, chair. Um, couldn't we have discussed the applicants first? <laughs> well, they said, all right, okay. So we should discuss the applicants. I said, well, kind of not much point, though, is there really? <laughs> 
I think that was for my former seat on St. Bride's Council, wasn't it? So, but thank you, Sullivan family, for the subscribe. And he's somebody who think, uh, or he or she, the thing of going a public inquiry looking at all contracts going back as long as we can would be a good idea. Um, I but, look at when when I said I would I, I wouldn't not support it. I, no. and, and certainly about something like that, I you know it, that needs to be explained the the benefits of it, um, but. It's not. It's not where my motivation would be. I, I'm about. That's happened. We have to provide the people. The people of Bridgen deserve better. Let's give them a better, and, and let's move forward. And whether that comes about from learnings from a public inquiry, then then so be it. Yeah. Well, I've read the re the report into what was done a couple of times now, and I've actually done some research on the companies involved: Tower Energy, Workco, CIC, SBS, and Green Renewable. Now, three of the companies were all created within just over 18 months of each other. This is um, Green Renewable, WorkCo, and Tower Energy, because SBS, a, a company that, again, this council was a director of, that for some reason has never existed on Companies House, never has had a VAT number, even though it supposedly that it, it gave a false VAT number to the council. And I've done that. Now, WorkCo, who helped BCPC put the fund bids together to, to get the funding and then further on, they only got paid £10,000. There is another WorkCo in Newport, but they're nothing to do with this. So if anybody sees, it's not the same company. They're a training company. Um, this company, WorkCo, kept going in voluntary administration because you kept seeing it going to receiver every couple of months till eventually it went back again and that was it and they had when they finally went into liquidation they had a roughly about 146 thousand pound in their bank account this was in 2017 and this is when the problems had already been known and been known for a long time so why haven't bcbc got on to uh, putting a claim against WorkCo because they handed the work to Green Renewable, who then hand, handed it to Tower Energy and SBS, and yeah, so and their company direct kept putting in. It was only one person, one company director, and kept putting it into kept going to receivers and coming back and going back and forth until why didn't BCBC before? 2017 because they knew about these problems from at least 2015 why didn't they put a claim into work code again because they had assets right. of 146 thousand pounds which went to charity yeah, charities well, in the well, end. well this is this is what we were talking about i, I said it earlier every corner every corner you look around every store you weren't turn it was wrong it was defective mm. And, and and that's a yet another failure. Everything about this was wrong. It's you know I work in the construction industry. Um, it can be a little bit. I'm not going to say grubby. I've said it. It can be a little bit interesting at times. Yeah, and and and, and you know I think it's done a whole lot of stuff all, all over my. I was going to say short career, but over the 20, 30 years that I've worked, you know it, it, it's transformed. But you know you. you you got to be bloody on top of these people, yeah. You've got to be on top of contractors. You've got to, you, you, you know. That's not to say they're wrong and all of all of them are wrong. And they're not. They're not. There's really good people out there, but yeah. you've got to be on top of it. You've got to be on top of it in every single way. And they simply were not to such a degree that it's hard to believe that it's simple incompetence. Yeah. Well, this, no, this, is, it, this is this is where I've this is where everything that is so wrong, you know. This Nothing is where right. Councillor David was wrong this morning, and 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 it's, it may not be a, a shared view. I actually quite like Hugh. I've met Hugh at many events, and I like him as a person. Um, I, I don't feel he did himself any justice this morning in any way, and this is where he was wrong. This is not about this type of rendering or, or protection or insulation failing. This is not a countrywide issue. This is not, you know, when you went on about UK government need to remedy this because this, this has happened all over Wales. No, no, this hasn't happened all over Wales. 
there may be circumstances where the rendering and the insulation has failed, but what happened with our bed in Bridgend is nothing like what has happened around mm -hmm. Wales. This is so multi-layered wrong because we cannot get back from the fact that a, a, a job designed to do something right has now created a minimum of three and a half million pounds after 10 years of ruining people's lives to put right. It comes down to systemic failure for whatever reason, because this is not a Wales wide issue. This is a very exclusive issue to this County Borough Council in how they awarded, managed, maintained and paid this contract. And you're right, yeah. companies were paid who have evidence of false VAT registration numbers on. Yeah, and that one company that had false VAT registration, the councillor was the director of. So that's fraud in itself. But uh, there's a question here from Philip Pickering, and I will answer this. He's asking, was the RBED work signed off by building control at BCBC? In the report, it's, it states that um, Green Renewable Wales and their contractors were all paid before it was signed off because Green Renewable Wales were trying to get it signed off before they got paid and after they got paid as well. So why are they paying for it when BCBC mm. Building Control haven't even signed it off as work is acceptable? They won't adopt as I said, as I said, and they won't adopt streets. I've so. As I said, as I, every element is wrong. Everything. There's no one thing that is correct. The more you look, you will find something that wasn't done correctly. It, we can be careful what we say, yeah? But yeah. when, you know, I, I, I got a nose for this sort of thing. It goes with the job. When everything is wrong, nobody is that incompetent. <laughs> no, you've been a contractor. Um, you were, and you, Martin, you deal with contractors on a regular basis in your job. Would you, would your company pay another company before work is signed off that it's acceptable? No, I mean, there's obviously nuances. You have stage payments, and, yeah. you know, but they don't, but, they don't, but it's all attached, it's all attached to something, yeah. So, yeah. In, in principle. In principle, no, he wouldn't. I mean, there are nuances, but in principle, no, no, he wouldn't. You, you would pay them when that milestone or, or that target has been achieved. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it, it, when you have a framework, for example, you may be paying them on a on a on a paid when paid basis, or you might be, you know, you want you want cash new drill or that sort of thing. But in in principle, no, 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 you wouldn't. Right. Anything you want to add, Leanne? No, I don't have the no. <laughs> said everything. Oh, I think we said, we said everything. I don't want to get in any bother. I use the word alleged. I don't want to <laughs> make a mistake and not use that the next time. Well, it, it, I, it, is, it, is, it is a really difficult situation because we have to be mindful of the fact that a family have lost a father and a husband and all that yeah. kind of stuff. And, and, and that, that, that needs to be uh, re respected in this. But, yeah. but we, we cannot get away from the facts. And, and, and we, we have to be very mindful of, of the situation. And Look, Bridgend County Independence, change for Bridgend have been on this since since the day we all met up because we've known, and I, I, go, I go back to, you know, Hugh saying that he, he became aware late. Well, I could have told him because I, I, you know, I had all the emails. You know, there was there was a whole yeah. thing with um, wood, wood chip recycling on my state road. You know, you know, there's a local community council up there who've, who've raised concerns over this. And it, it, people, let, let, let's look positive. Let's think, let's think positively here. People have to have faith in their local authority. This has shaken that faith. And, yeah. and, and, and we as independent councillors, however we want to, you know, band together or, or, or do whatever we have to do, um, we have to offer people better than this because people must feel rightly let down by what's happened here because systems should be in place to protect yeah. them from this. And I'm thinking more of the 105 houses that are up there um, that, 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 have, that have been victims of this. It, it's important that people have faith in their local authority. This cannot be allowed to happen again. Um, it should never have happened in the first place. And, and you know, that's a political argument. And, and we can all we can all say, oh, well, this was all Labour's fault and all blah, blah, blah. Fundamentally, people should never, ever see their local authority on the national news for this two weeks out of three. No, because um, 
it, it's wrong. No, 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 yeah. it, it, it's wrong. And I'm yeah, kind of it, it, myself a little bit. <laughs> it, it, it is wrong. And we had Huranka Davis on BBC World Politics the other week in this, and he was saying how much it's a tragedy and how much it's that. Today I received a group of freedom of information requests from somebody who had requested them from um, Huranka Davis' office, Chris Elmore's office, and BCBC. And Huranka Davis, in one, in all that time, wrote one email to go for to encourage back in last year to encourage the bridge and go forward with getting these properties redone. And I'll give so that's nothing. He's on there saying how much a tragedy it is, but he'd done nothing. He and I know he was told, uh, we've been told by residents that they've gone to him before that. But I would like to um, praise Chris Elmore because since 2017, he has been going on and on at this and he's been writing emails, not just to BCBC and Hugh David, but to Leslie Griffiths and to other people in thing to try and get something done, to try and get updates, to find out what his constituents. And there's got to be more than a dozen letters from him that on emails that he's sent in regards to this, so yeah, we bash Labour, but when somebody does something good like Chris Elmore has, and he's been on this for the last few years, you, you praise the work that they've done. And okay, they may not have got the we answers. We do praise that, Luke. Yeah, we, we do. do praise that, Luke. But yeah. but had Chris Elmore been of a political, a different political stripe, he'd have done more than written uh, written letters, wouldn't he? Yeah, maybe. But I, I'll give him credit because he didn't just write to Hugh David. He wrote to Leslie Griffiths. He wrote to whoever was involved in the Wel in the Welsh Assembly government as well. Um, what's going on? Can we have updates and how and all this? So I'll give him credit for that. Maybe he could have done more, but I think he's done a hell of a lot more compared to Hugh Rank Davis and Bridge and Canterbury Council. He's, he's, not, he's not here to defend himself either. So, no, you know, no. and, and you're taking that, that role and, and, and that's fine. But um, I was just trying to create that link back, which is clearly yeah. there. The, the establishment, people like to go on about the establishment, <laughs> uh, you know, and it usually means people in bowler hats and, you know, drinking clubs in, in, in Westminster and the rest of it. But in Wales, the establishment, such as it is, is, is and certainly in Bridge End, is, 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 is a different animal and uh, yeah yeah that, and that's just, possibly just, uh, shaking up just, just as a point of interest because the general public may be interested in this you've mentioned a freedom of inform information request did you know that your local mp and your local ms are not subject to the freedom of information act so you cannot request freedom of information information from them they are not covered by it so you can get all the information from the side that they've written to but you can't uh, request the information from your local mp or ms I did, and they turned me down. <laughs> I did in regard to you, but I didn't get the didn't get told that I, they don't they're not subject to it. Yeah, I got told that it will take too much work. No, right. Saying, well, the information, I, I've given the information you the dates, we've been given is that they're not covered by it. I th I thought they all were covered by freedom of information. Well, not not that we've been told. That's one for another day. Frozen. Luke's frozen now. <laughs> you have our so own Leanne, conversation whilst we're waiting. <laughs> How does I, this work? I, my, um, you know, gripe, I suppose, with it is if it had been, you know, maybe a more affluent part of Bridgend or, you know, a leafier part of Bridgend, it had happened in, would it have taken, you know, so long for it to come to public attention and for, for something to be done about it? I, I wouldn't have thought so. No, and that's probably a valid point. You know, it, it's you would certainly hope not, but it's only Kyra has that crossed their minds. You'd certainly really hope that that hasn't been the case because the people there have been failed. I've just I received a message from Lucas. Computers crashed. We may have to uh, cover for them. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Martin, anything you want to talk about? <laughs> well, um, at the risk of taking over Luke's show. Uh, I think he did want to talk about. Uh, I think he did also want to talk about the council tax freeze. 
So I don't want to ask any questions <laughs> and spoil it. <laughs> Luca, I think it's going back in. Perhaps we should all talk I'm about how just... wonderful Luca is whilst he's not here. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to text. I'm going to text him now and ask. Oh, not text. Message him and ask if he wants us to talk about. <laughs> no, well, whilst whilst you're doing that, and whilst he's not here to hear that, I think it would be good for us to actually acknowledge the bravery that that Luke did the other day when he spoke about his mental health issues. I think that was such a brave move for him and anybody who's who's gone through that, and just to empower other people to actually realise that oh, you can talk about these things. Oh, a hundred percent, and and to come back from that in this style so so i you know i i you know i i've come back i've got my i've got my challenges and i've got through those i'm feeling a bit better and now i'm going to do a live stream and <laughs> to the world yeah that's yeah. some way back so 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 well well done luke absolutely absolutely i mean it takes a lot to put your head above the parapet anyway but um especially to, to do it so openly and to do it where you know people who want to have a pop at you can then use that as ammunition um mm. yeah, it's pretty ballsy yeah well the, the, i mean I, I didn't know it was happening i knew the interview had happened but uh, i was in school with david james and we played rugby together and he's done a very public um interview on scrum five tonight i think it is important that that everybody but perhaps males of a certain generation feel that they can open mm -hmm. up because i mean we were always brought up to to keep a stiff upper lip and not discuss mm -hmm. your, your feelings and stuff like that. But I, I, I watched the video of Luke. It was a very difficult watch because, you know, you kind of feel, oh, I wish I'd been there more for him and reached out and he could have spoken to me, but we never really know what people are going through. And yeah, a lot of credit to Luke for, for doing that in, in a public way, talking to a camera. It's, it's, you know, it's not, it, it, it's not easy. So uh, yeah, hats, hats off on, on that. It was, um, yeah. Credit. Any update from him, Mart? I am um, asking. Uh, he has asked if we could talk about something, but I'm not quite. Uh, I'm not quite <laughs> sure I understand what he's asking. So, so um, yeah. Let, let, let's see if he's. Uh, let's see if he's coming back. Hang on. So I'm just seeing a, a Facebook post at the minute that the river next to my uh, house in Yorkshire is very high. I hope it doesn't get any higher than that. Ah, right. What 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 Luke is saying is that, and and it's 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 the last I think of the Arbed sort of uh, questions, is that as he understands it, when BCBC were granted the funding, they only had seven weeks. They had to they had to do the work within seven weeks of having the funding. Now. Um, that he's waiting for his PC to finish loading, and he will be back in soon. Uh, and I guess, uh, therefore, he's, he he's, he's wants to pose the question to us as whether we felt that 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 rush to do the work perhaps uh, not excuses, but explains why things were done the way they were done. I I I got to admit, I I I wasn't fully aware of that. But um, Steve, Leander, I don't know if you've got a view on this. No, I, I didn't know that. No, I mean, I suppose it explains maybe why it doesn't justify, but it explains maybe why some steps were missed initially. But then to be making payments before work signed off and all the things that came after, to not be checking invoices, to not be doing a due diligence on companies, you know, no, that, that doesn't really explain that bit, no. <laughs> Uh, it, I mean, it, it kind of points towards a wider problem with public funding. I mean, you mm. you look at a big, a huge bugbear of mine, and po possibly one of the things that pushed me into this this life of this role of being a councillor. Vibrant and viable places was used to replace the Rue car park. Now, vibrant and viable places was a funding scheme to put residential housing into town centres, and it was also used for the um, the development of the old McDonald's site, which is now um, the uh, the Laco where Lacochina is, and and there, there are projects like that. That that there's a funding pot, and these pots are designed without any kind of plan to what you're going to do with it. So so this money came forward for our bed, and they had seven weeks to spend it, and nothing can be done right in that time scale you know i mean we we all sit on community council it takes you three months to get a bench put somewhere 
You can't. It does, yeah. You, you can't <laughs> insulate twenty five houses in seven weeks and get it right. Uh, I, I, I mean, I don't accept it as an excuse, but it's a potential reason as to why things went so drastically wrong because your 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 kind of vision of where you're going is skewed when you're you're up against the clock. You know, you. Mm-hmm. How do you get something through council in seven weeks to the point that you, you you're doing that? And I mean that, that's a bigger picture thing. But there are so many streams of ah, public Luke's, funding. Luke's back. <laughs> we can stop talking about him now. So yeah, all I'm of those subscriptions that we took thing. whilst he was away. Luke, what do <laughs> you, you want to explain? Like, I, I I had something I wanted to add on our bed, but you know we didn't want to move it on, so we didn't move it on. Um, so I don't know if you want to explain um, where you've been, or, or I, we just what, want to what on. Um, I do apologise. I've got a GoFundMe up, and I'd love people to help me out. I, am, I know people don't have my my computer has this bad habit of just shutting down, and it could be on for five minutes and shut down, or four or five hours and then shut down. It's completely at random. It's failing so much. My computer is older than my son, and my son is starting GCSEs next year. How bad the computer <laughs> is. So I, I do apologise for that, and then it's slow loading up. So I'm not sure what you're talking about. I asked about. a question, um, Luke. Did you talk about... The seven weeks, yeah. Yeah. Oh, what and about the seven the weeks? Because that's all... It's, it's all... <laughs> So Go he's my again. Oh, sorry, sorry. No, he's moving a bit. But yeah, it was my concern that, that 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 we may be in danger of repeating the mistakes of the past, because the money that's been granted, there's a there's, it's it's not cut and dried. We know full well that that money only is only no. intended to pay for the removal and replacement of of the cladding. So the people who are out of pocket, who have you know, who who for various reasons have spent their own money, they they won't get compensated for that. And I've got a couple of notes here on that as well. Uh, but in addition, we don't know that that three and a half million and the eight hundred and fifty five k of that, which which is BCBC, we don't know that that's enough. No. We don't know if that's enough. Uh, no. Because the, the surveys haven't been done yet, so we don't know. That's an estimate. So, so we don't know if that's enough. We could be spending more than that, and um, and it will compensate the poor people who are, who are out of pocket. The other thing is, um, as I understand it, councillors have been told that it's unlikely that that money will actually be spent in this financial year. Mm-hmm. It may well, be it, it may it, be twenty three, twenty four before this money is spent. So that's another winter. Another winter, you know, and um, it, it's just, yeah, it's. Just, I'm just concerned that that we're, it's just going to go on and on and on, and 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 if we end up running the council again, that's going to be an hour lapse. But but we'd have to make sure we, you know we, we we do the right thing. But but you know, it's it's still not sorted by a long shot. Sorry, the, I mean, the, the, we the, still the, need to be in charge now that you've gone. You have to restore some order now. Yeah, absolutely. But I mean, the, the thing is with, with how this was presented to the council and how you have to work within these parameters, it's a bigger issue. I mean, you, you look at there was a, um, a survey carried out by BCBC and 85% of people wanted to see the, 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 the second stage of pedestrianisation reversed. And there was, there was a cost put on that. Now, since that's happened and they've been told there's no money, BCBC have put pedestrianised two roundabouts because there is a funding stream available for that, something that nobody's asked for, something that nobody has pushed for having, they can get funding for because those funding streams are available, but they can't find funding streams for something the public want. So you, yeah. you're looking at a major overhaul of how this, this entire industry of, of how councils apply for public funding is, is managed properly. Because if BCBC were given seven weeks to appoint a contractor and get all of the contracts drawn up, that's not enough time. And it's sometimes not. you have sometimes you have to say, well, we won't go for that money because we're not set up and we're not ready for it. It wasn't to get the contracts drawn up and get a contractor. It was to complete all the work as well. Physically so impossible. It, it is. But, yes, so it is impossible, but the procurement process wasn't followed. So... That, that was what I was asking, I believe it was Martin who messaged me and I said, that's, that's about seven weeks. Whether the Welsh Government have some 
even more liability for placing such a tight timeline on receiving the funding to having work completed. I think this also, and again, we've talked and talked about our, our bed, but I think this also goes back to the very beginning um, of our bed and why BCBC took it upon themselves to to uh, seek funding to repair, was it 29, uh, to, to, to insulate 29 houses? Why did they uh, do that in the first place? So why did they do that in the first place? And it, it's really weird when you think about it, because 100 odd had been done by other parties. And, and yeah. 20, they suddenly decided at, at the last minute that they fancied doing 29. Why would they do that? It, it's done. very strange, you know. You know, you know. Look, in our community council, we've got a we've got a community access plan. So we yeah. we you know since twenty sixteen, then we do need to upgrade it and, and bring it up to date. But we've had a list of works to be done, so that when funding is available, we say, oh, well, we've got a list of things that we'd like to do, mm. and, and and therefore we get up for it. If someone says, you know, there's there's fifty thousand available for this, whether we we know what we'd spend it on. Yeah. There, there's there's more here. There's more here. Um, and, and I know I, I don't want to go further because it, it no. gets in the realms of, 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 of sort of guessing and, and, and scant, yeah. you know, the salacious sort of talk. But but why did they suddenly take it upon themselves to do 29 houses? Very strange, very strange. I, I, I'm i sure we're going to speak about this again some other time, but people are looking bored like Leon up there, head in hand. <laughs> Sorry. No, that's just my, uh, my resting face. <laughs> you, look, you look very bored because. Martin does go on and on and on. <laughs> you probably know that from council meetings if you go to St Bride's, is it? No, I yeah, I'm a Nasaldra community council. So. Oh, I'm a, oh yes, you're deputy chair, aren't you, at the moment? Yeah. That's my old council as well. Um, yeah, I, I've been everywhere. Anyway, let's move on to this year's council tax freeze now. Um, we'll keep this fair, fairly short because our other thing I want to discuss, and hopefully there's more questions that people want to ask of you three. Um, but yeah, this year is council tax freeze. It's in part because of a higher than expected increase from the Welsh government, which is 9% increase, I believe it was this year. Um, I predicted that the council tax would be frozen even before this, or below it, even before um the announcement of a nine percent increase i predicted this last year on videos and things like that because we were coming up to election cycle now i'm not saying that it's bcbc have done it because of an election cycle but labor controlled both the welsh assembly government and bcbc and it it, it certainly helps the council tax will go up a little bit due to the pre police and crime commissioner raising it by five percent but bcbc have no control of that um we me and martin were told in a meeting last week that even if the council representatives voted against it all the police and crime commissioner has to do and go away is lower it by 0.01 percent and that's the final figure because they can't veto it twice, which doesn't thing. But come on, guys, let's have a discussion on the council tax freeze this year and not again, not last year when I suppose we we're in a more dire situation last year financially for people. Yeah, yeah I just find it convenient. Um that um, a lot of the uh, campaign at the moment is about the cost of living crisis. Uh, it's a bit of a buzzword. Um, and, you know, we're coming out of the latter part of the pandemic now. And um, there's a lot of conflation, I think, on social media about what parts BCB, uh, BCBC are responsible for freezing, what parts Welsh government are responsible for freezing, what payments are coming from Welsh Government, what payments are coming from BCBC. So I think it's quite, um, the council tax freeze is bundled up in quite a nice package of look at everything that BCBC are giving you um, and people don't 
really get the story behind it or get how that's arrived at. Um, but it's, it's a good slogan, I guess, to say that council tax is frozen. And I think it will stick in a, a lot of people's minds and people will see it as a positive thing. So, you know, yeah. do I understand why they've done it? Yes. Do I understand why they're campaigning about it? Yes. So Yeah. Well, I hope we see, see this thing, but it's been found in, is it medium and turn investment or something like medium that? Medium turn the, financial statement. The medium turn financial statement that is in there that, the council tax will be going up 4.5% every subsequent year after, supposedly. Um, any thoughts on that, Martin or Steve? I think we should pass to Martin, who's the one who actually found that. <laughs> oh, OK, Martin. <laughs> I was looking for something else. I was looking for something else. And, uh, yeah, I saw, so, so I, I read through the, the, the paperwork and it said next... Okay, the budget the assumption is is that council tax will 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 um will rise four and a half percent year on year between twenty three and twenty four. So I'll just check on my notes. Um, I, it, it's 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 just politics, isn't it? The freeze yeah. is just politics. Uh, I mean, they've had this money and they've decided to have a freeze. Last year, when we criticised them for putting it up to three point nine percent, and and we said we should use reserves. Uh, to underpin, to underwrite, yeah. So it's not about it's not about living off reserves, which is what which is what some of our opponents will say. What it's about is is saying, look, we we need to find this money now. So we'll say we'll underpin by reserves. We'll under, um, but in the meantime, we would expect departments to find to find efficiencies. Now, they said it couldn't be done, and then a few months later, then said, oh, we had a bit more money than we thought. We've also then seen that the audit report, uh, the Welsh audit report, which I think it was November's audit committee, which, which said the BCBC holds higher reserves than the Welsh average. So I think the Welsh average is something in the region of 15% of BCBC. And again, it's the top of my head now, about 20. So, so there's, there's more reserves there than there need to be. Um, also, they, they, they underspend. The BCBC have underspent... Uh, year on year, certainly for the last five years, they've underspent. So, so they're not very good at managing money. No, they will argue it's good to underspend, isn't it? Well, it's not if you're taxing people. Uh, and underspending is, is not a good thing if you're if you're a uh, if you're a, a public body be, because you you know you've taken money off people which they fully expect you to spend on. So, yeah, it's cynic, it's a cynic, it's cynical. So, what I say. And it's and, and it's affordable only because of, of the better than expected uh, expected uh, um, Welsh government settlement. But my understanding is actually the Welsh government settlement this year actually allows for more than a freeze. That yeah. that if they freeze it, the Welsh government settlement will actually increase reserves again. They're also uh, they they're also. Um, forecasting and underspend unsurprisingly again this year. So I say cut it. If there is really a cost of living crisis, oh, no, there is, look at another really, but if they are really concerned about it in the way they say, cut it, cut it by 1%, don't freeze it, cut it by 1%, that will cost something in the region of 890K. Uh, uh, they, they can find 855 to bail out Arbed. And, and remember what I said just now. It's highly likely that that 855 won't be spent this year anyway. Cut it by 1%. Send the message well, that we do care about the cost of living. Cut it by 1%. And um, we, we, I can't tell you exactly where that 1% will come from. But what, what I would say is that we, un, we underwrite it by reserves. And we say, right, if you don't find in your savings, reserves will pay for it. But we expect you, we expect you, senior officers, to find in your savings efficiencies, not cutting off arms and legs, cutting off fat. We will find I, that. I, I just like to this might do. say, I wasn't laughing at what Martin was saying. I just had a pop up saying, the Gen Political Owl is live now. Do you want to watch? <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, uh, it's, we, we get more money from the Welsh government, isn't that correct? Than mm -hmm. we do from council tax. Yeah, by so a long way. 9% of that is much, much higher than even going back on that 3.9% that they added last year. It's much, much more. So say we get 100 million from council tax and 50 million from 
Uh, 100 million from the Welsh government and 50 million from council tax. I know it's not that, it's just arbitrary. So you, you had 3.9% last year, so you're taking your total up to what, 52, 50, between 52 and 55? But you had 9% of 100 million, that's 109,000, so it's more than double. It's nearly three times what you added last year. So they could theoretically drop it by more than 1%. Uh, they, they, they can, Luke, and it, this, this is all about political will and and how you do things. You know, 12, 12 months ago, Bridgen County Independence made a very, uh, very bold statement and said, we are in, uh, we were in a cost of living crisis last year. A, a large percentage of our ca county residents were on 80% of their wages yeah. and they were forced to be living at home. There was, yeah, a, there was a cost, there was a cost of living crisis last year. And the Bridgen County Independence made a very bold statement. Freeze it this year and use unallocated reserves to cover the 3.9% that you're putting up on people. And, and we were ridiculed, yeah. genuinely ridiculed online. You don't understand how council budgets work. You don't know what you're talking about. You don't know the intricate nature of how this is. And then within a week, Neath Portalba Council used unallocated reserves to not, hire, to, to not raise the council tax as much as they felt they were going to. They put one yeah. proposal forward. And then a week later, whether it's linked to what we put out, we've got no idea. But within seven days, Neath Portal will put a different offering out and used unallocated reserves. So tell me yeah. who doesn't understand how budgets work. Because our proposal was not about, as Martin said, not living off reserves. But what are reserves? Reserves yeah, are there for a rainy day. For a rainy day. day. <laughs> Absolutely. And, and the financial director or the, the, the cabinet member for, for, for finances actually said last year, it's not just raining, it's absolutely chucking it down. And and what what is the reason for doing this? And Martin is absolutely spot on. We've had the joke about we're predetermined, not pre-medit or whatever it was in the cabinet meeting. What this current BCBC cabinet has to realise is that they've got to go in front of full council very shortly and they don't hold a majority. They have to put a case forward for this. The Labour group at this moment in time is short of a majority in that chamber. And if enough councillors vote against this, it doesn't go through. Then they've got to start looking at alternatives. Because the days of, as Mar again, as Martin said, when Keir went through, they had, you know, they had a huge majority and it didn't matter the scrutiny on the cabinet. This no. budget is going to be scrutinised by non-Labour councillors. And I sincerely hope that all of those go through that budget and they hold them to account. Can this be better can this be not a pay freeze to go on the top line of an election leaflet can this genuinely be in the interest of the people that we serve can we yeah. actually give them something back because there's there's two stages to agree in a budget one what you're going to spend as soon as that's passed how are you going to fund it well let's get this budget approved let's not make any cuts let's not look at that in the first instance then we start discussing how they're going to fund it and a cabinet going into a meeting saying it's going to be no percent is a proposal. It's no longer a, a done deal because they don't have the numbers. Make a case for it. Put it up for scrutiny in front of elected councillors and let's do what's right for the people of Bridgend. Yeah. And the thing you'll find, Steve, is that the numbers don't exist. This is the problem uh, with, with, with BCBC. They, the, the, the figures are not given to the uh, full council or to all councillors. Uh, and I doubt, actually, whether BCBC do do a, a, a bottom-up budget from, from a blank sheet of paper. Uh, they use the words like top slice and all the rest. It, it just, I think they just... I think they take last year's budget and then and they decide what it's going to be. There needs to be a bottom-up... Uh, a bottom-up um, building of of a budget from scratch, and, and if we, you know, if I certainly if I was elected and and, and in, a, in 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 a position of influence, that's what I would do. There'll be no more of this. We'll adjust last year's. We'll adjust last year because that's where this argument about oh, what will you cut come from? What will you cut from, in, in order to do that? Well, of course, it's a, it's a it's a false argument because that assumes that everything is optimized. That assumes that those, those spends are correct, and as we know, they underspend every way. No, it has to be it has to be start from scratch blank piece of paper what do we want to do as a council build up from there and if it takes it takes a year then so be it we'll start the work uh, the day after the election yeah well i think because you said they've underspent for the last few years and it still hasn't gone away it's still there hanging over the heads it's the 500 percent increase in sports pitch fees because it's only still delayed and and that's a big problem 
I've, I'd love them to say one way or the other for the next five years, it's we're, we're either going to raise it or get rid of it completely and it's not going to be considered again. It was used to concentrate sports pitches, yeah. sports teams to community asset transfer because mm -hmm. they immediately came out and said, oh, well, if you engage with this and we won't do it, it was cruel. It put people at, at risk of their, their hard work, the communities, the, everything, and it was, it was a disgraceful act. We're going to put it at 500% 500, unless you talk to us about taking on, and let's not call it a community asset transfer because they're not assets. They've no. been underfunded for years, and it's going to need a lot of work and a lot of investment for a lot of time. I think I think we've done the figures, Martin. I know you've been working with councillors on this. The two pavilions in New Newbridge Fields, they're four hundred thousand pounds in 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 arrears on investment. Yeah, it's like we had it on Coity Higher. We were looking to work with sports teams to help them keep keep those pitches, keep those assets, and, and keep playing. And it came to a point where we expressed interest in Great Western Avenue. Um, Lichard, wasn't it, in the Lichard Fields and the commun community centre there. And Owen just dropped the community centre. And it almost seemed like, because we expected, expressed interest, that we were going to say, yeah, we'll definitely take it on, wasn't it? But and, 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 of course, the problem is... BCBC have now admitted that they don't know the cost and expenditure. Sorry, the cost is cost and profit, uh, profit and loss for each, for each um, for each asset. So they don't know, yeah. for example, where the Great Western Avenue makes a profit or not. So they don't know how much income they they generate in there uh, and how much it costs to maintain. Similarly, you know, you know, they want the community council to take over Lichard Park, not, not Lichard Park, the street Lichard Park, the, the playing field and the community centre. Now, that's no longer a going concern because it's been because of COVID, you know, all those groups, we don't know if they're going to come back. They can't really tell us what it costs to run and maintain the community centre and, and, and the, the playing fields. They don't know. So how do they expect a community council to take these on? Or, or even worse, a, a sports club. At least, at least a community council can raise tax. The sports club will just mm. fold. I mean, it's, that, it's that's just ad hoc nonsense. It's ad hoc nonsense. Where does it all fit into the bigger plan, this 500% rise? And it, it's just someone had a bright idea. And now they're trying to force clubs to, to um, force clubs to, you know, blackmail clubs to take things on. And they're not proper asset transfers. They're leases. The 35 year yeah. leases. They're a transfer of liability, as Steve says. I, I was in a One Voice Wales, which is, which is the body who, who, who um, like the trade body, for want of a better word, for, for, for town and community councils. Uh, uh, meeting this week, and they said we don't recognize what BCBC are doing as an asset transfer. An asset transfer is title freehold transferred to the council, and then you can perhaps do some stuff about it. This is just nonsense, and it's it's not joined up, it's not part of a strategy. And and it, it will it, it will put clubs and community councils in financial distress, and it will fragment the 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 sports infrastructure for Bridgen. But it, it, it's a mindset as well, Luke. I mean, um, there was a, a situation where an unaffiliated independent councillor asked about tourism budgets uh, in, in full council meeting, Ros Sturman. And, and her answer back was, well, we, we can't afford um, a tourism department because it would mean putting council tax up by 3%. No, it won't. Because what you're actually saying there is to create a tourism department, it needs £3 million. Because the budget roughly, for yeah, the budget for the tourism department is what you set the budget for the tourism department to be. But you can't you can't see you can't sit in a in a public meeting as a as a, you know as a BCBC cabinet. I'm not talking about individuals here. I'm talking about corporately as a cabinet. And this is the mentality there. You know, a, a democratically elected councillor saying, "Can we have a tourism department?" And the answer back being no, because we'd have to put council tax up by three percent, which is what was reported in the press. That's not an answer. Yeah. An answer is how do we make this work? Yes, yeah. it's more costs, but what are the everything in life has a cost, but what's the return? And just to say it takes three percent on council tax, it's just nonsense. Okay, um, I'm glad you talked about tourism because I did want to speak in part about that, and we'll move off council tax now. There is an abortive, uh, a board a tourism board department in Bridgend. Nope. But yet, I've seen a video on YouTube from, done 10 months ago for from Bridgend Tourism. 
highlighting Bridge End. I mean, it, it was an okay video, it wasn't great. But my question is, uh, well, I suppose my wonderings is, Bridge End does have some stuff to offer. It's not nowhere, nowhere near as good as it could be because we have so much history with World War II, with Romans, with all the castles, with the commons, with the ancient, with the uh, ancient burial site, the Warrens. We have the oldest ironworks in Wales at one point, but that's completely disappeared now, near enough, because of the railway in Lichard. But we still got an old um, ironworks, but we've got ancient forest out in Pencoy. We've got so much nature as well. Why haven't Bridge End over the last 20 odd years tried to capitalize on that, especially since we've lost Ford? We're losing Sony are going getting smaller and smaller, it seems, every couple of years. And we lose so much business, and every business seems to be moving more towards Cardiff with the capital region deal i've got no problem with the capital region deal apart from everything seems to be centered in cardiff and nothing much further out surrounding the areas like us or anything like that if that's going to happen why don't we focus on tourism we've got the history here we've got the nature we could turn port call into something that's more modern why shouldn't we do that as a council or as a county all right, here's a question for you then. Can yeah. can Bridge End be as good as Cardiff? Can Port Call be as good as Blackpool? The answer to those are probably both no. But can they be the best that they can be? And are we doing that at the moment? Uh, we're definitely not doing it at the moment. And I, and I think actually we could be become best. We could probably be better than Cardiff. Blackpool Seafront, probably not because Port Call isn't big enough. For that, and we haven't got that seafront. We've got houses there and hotels, but we haven't got the room for arcades or things like that. Uh, but certainly, I think we could do better in Cardiff with the history we've got with World War Two. We've still got Park Farm, um, yeah, Park Farm there. We the SAS trained in Tondi, although that's going to disappear now with the housing development there. But we've got the A48 that goes up to Broadcastle, is it? That was the golden mile where the Roman soldiers used to line up to get paid. But my, so much... but my, my, my reason for asking that question is, you see, you can always find a hundred reasons not to do something, but there's always a reason to do it. Now, now yeah. Port Call can be marketed. That's what mm. tourism is, marketing. can be marketed better. Now, again, Bridgen County Events put a post out about asking the question over whether the £50,000 was well spent on the um, the, the, the golf and events at Port Paul. If it was part of a structure, if it was part of a plan, if it was part of a remit that they'd designed, then it's a worthwhile investment. But there isn't one. No. You know, I, I had to sit in on a community forum meeting the other day. And Councillor David Unwin pointed out that you can go to a service station on the M4 corridor and you won't find a printed leaflet promoting our area in any of them along the entire length of the M4. There's no structure, there's no thinking, there's no pride, there's no... Porthcawl is an amazing place. We all go there. Yeah. You know, Miners Week, Miners Fortnight, it was bustling. But, you know, they're on, that, they're on about now talking about putting more houses on there. We are just a commuter town. That's all we are now. We're a commuter area where people go and they, they live here so they can get jobs elsewhere. And that's a dangerous road to go down because you can't come back from it. And, and yeah, we, we need to, we need, you know, Island Farm, yeah, I know you spoke to Councillor Spiller about Island Farm. Yeah. In any other county, that would be an extremely well visited, a visitor attraction that commemorates its history. Yeah. And here it's forgotten about and the people there aren't supported. We lack ambition here. And uh, when I say we... I mean, the local authority lacks the ambition, not the people. The people need to be led. Uh, but the local authority just lacks the ambition to take us forward. Yeah, it, it, it's not something that's, as I said in the interview, the interview it wouldn't be done overnight. It would be a strategic plan to build up. But at the moment, it just seems a scattergun effect, like um, the marina and Port Call, which started up, and then it's finally, I think it's not, they're not doing it again now. You've got 
But we should build on what the Elvis Festival brings in every summer. They're on about doing a park and ride system into Port Call, which, yeah, it's a great idea, but we haven't got enough to sustain that on a yearly basis, to, to stay, sustain a park and ride system on a yearly basis. It, and where would you put the park and ride system? In another village just outside it. Not going to work. Increase the infrastructure in Port Call and have a plan to bring better entertainment, better even make the grand uh, the theatre better, have more shows there, just so we can draw more tourism and then build on it in the rest of the county, which will then help the town centres, uh, Puthcall, Pencoig, um, my Steg and Bridge End Town Centres, because more visitors are coming, more visitors want to go around, more independent shops, and you've got work coming in because we're not attracting the big companies anymore. Ineos pulled out, Ford have gone, Sony are getting smaller, CGI have got smaller. They used to have two, three buildings, I think they're down to two now, or Logica as it was, it's CGI now. And we seem to be losing business, but there's no strategy for bringing business in or finding another revenue source for local people to work because not everybody wants to travel to Cardiff to work. It's, it could be expensive. The Metro eventually will come, but that will, just as Steve said, make Bridge End a commuter town and make every other town surrounding Cardiff commuter towns and Cardiff the one that's getting all the business, which will then put prices up here because people can't afford to live in Cardiff, so they move, mm. move out. With, and buy homes in Bridge End or Barry or wherever, which will incre increase prices, and local people can't afford those prices. It, it happened to Aldershot, it's happened to many other uh, towns near London and near other big cities. So I think the tourism, because we have the history there, we just need to showcase that history. We have the nature here, we need to showcase it, and we have a fantastic seaside town. Look, we're in a unique position. Not many towns can say they've got the history, they've got the seafront, they've got the nature. Let's build on that. It's make our own thing. So anybody else want to come in? I think there's a general maybe lack of pride at BCBC in our area. I do wonder why it is that Bridge End Town Council are doing the blue plaques, are doing wartime Bridge End, are doing all these yeah. kind of things. And then, you know, what, what are we seeing uh, from BCBC in terms of giving people a reason to be proud of the area they live or an idea of the history? I'm not from Bridge End, as you probably all know. Um, I'm English, moved to Wales when I was 18 and I've been here 15 years since. Um, you know, and all I see when I speak to people is hearing about, you know, how great town used to be, how, you know, neglected town has become. And, you know, I, I just wonder how that's been allowed to happen. And, you know, we have to find a way back from that, really. And that comes from investment and it comes from giving people the chance to to promote new ideas and new ways of thinking. Because clearly what's been done so far, the established way of thinking hasn't worked. It hasn't worked for the people who live here. No. Um, I think only one of us on this panel here tonight is actually born and bred in Bridge End, Mr. Bletso. <laughs> uh, I come from England as well. I moved here in 92. Um, so I've been around Bridge End for 20 odd years. But, but, this, but this, this, this is what's frustrating, Luke. I mean, many people know, I know a lot of people from um, the Tennessee area of America. They come here and they adore this land. And, and yeah. when you see this area through the eyes of somebody mm -hmm. not born and raised here, they don't bring that negativity that you read on social media, mm -hmm. that, that kind of drag you down kind of pretend is rubbish. It isn't rubbish. And when you no. see the town through the eyes of people not from here, you know, and I know you mentioned to Councillor Spiller about this, you're 10 minutes from the beach and 15 minutes from the valleys. We're in a, such a unique position and we need, we need our local authority to be proud of where we are. And, you know, you, you can watch you can watch a council meeting and you can you know you can hear political rhetoric and national politics getting in the way. So you, you'd watch a cabinet meeting discussing the budget and they want to spend half their time talking about national austerity. Well, 
yeah, I mean, you, you can have your ideology around that, but we've got what we've got. We are where we are, and we deal with what we deal with. What can we do to make this a beacon of light within, you know, an M4 corridor? Why? How can we be the best that we can be? And, yeah. and you know, you get your settlements from national governments, and your settlement in Bridgend comes from Welsh government, which comes from Westminster, which political ideology can decide, you know, austerity and all this kind of stuff. But let's take a pride in where we're from. Let's look at the this look at our area through the eyes of those who visit here and let's sell it because yeah. inward investment is our future. You 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 can't survive on on a, you know on, on what you have. You have to continually be bringing things in. And you know let's 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 sell ourselves to the world. And and you start with this country and you know why are we not telling people who live in Swindon, Bristol, and all these places about the idyllic area that we live in to bring people down here so those who have hotels or Airbnbs make money from them? The local chip shops sell to them because that's where you, you, you start to create wealth and that's where you start to get rid of this negativity that surrounds us because it's there, but it, it's fed from a top down. When you, when you have a local authority that has a can't-do attitude, then that breeds the residents' feelings. Let's get up there and let's tell people how amazing we are, the area we live in. I mean, you, you've made a note that I'm the only one from here. When I lived in Wakefield, I told people where I was from. Not even just Bridgend. I told people I was from Wild Mill, Bridgend. I'm proud of where I'm from. And I think people need to re-engage with that pride of this area. Because we're an amazing place and we need to be led properly and not have this mentality of we can't do this because... There's yeah. a hundred reasons why not to do it, and you'll always need to find that reason why you should. Okay, Martin, do you want to do something quick? Because we yeah, I mean, I, mean, I, mean, I, I echo what 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 both Steve and Leanne have said. You know, they've given up, haven't they? they they've given up. Yeah. Uh, I, I'm sorry, but they have. B BCBC and the and and the current administration have given up. They, they they're out of ideas. You know, if you go to California, you can you can ski in Tahoe in 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 the morning. You can surf, you can surf, um, and you can surf by tea time. And um, you can kind of almost do that in Bridgend. You can go on the top of the bulk of this time of year. You can have a snowball fight, and then you can go down if you so wish, and you can uh, take part in, <laughs> on, on the Christmas Day swim in, in Porth Calls. You can kind of do it in, in its own sort of way. And, and there's not that many counties that you know you you've got high mountains and 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 and, and, and fantastic sea and and beaches and and everything in between you know the, the largest is it the largest dune system in europe mm -hmm. uh, yeah. between mouth mm -hmm. and mauer and it, it's this so much uh, um but as, i'm afraid as as with everything they've just given up why would you cut your and it's all austerity 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 yeah but it's choices isn't it it's choices and ambition and and um and inventiveness you know you, you have to cut your cloth differently when you've got less less money to go around but you don't just chop stuff off and that's it's just a lazy a lazy kind of defeatist attitude that says oh well we need to save it's not three million quid whatever you know you know, we need to save a sum of money. Therefore, rather than finding efficiencies, rather than saying we're going to work online and we're going to do this, that, and the other, we're going to turn the lights off in that car park, you know, and rather than doing that sort of thing, they just say, oh, we'll cut that whole department. It's a lazy, yeah. couldn't care less attitude. And and, and and maybe it's just the right time to, to end this now as we started. But they've given up. They're out of ideas. and 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 the reason that we haven't got a tourism department and we're not pushing it because it is the same reason as as they want to get rid of sports pitches or, or they just want to build houses because it's the path of least resistance and they've had enough it's time to put them out of their misery and and vote them out in may that's my last that's my last word on the matter <laughs> <laughs> well i think i think we'll leave it there on that we've got roughly about five seven minutes left if anybody watching, seven of you, wants to ask a question of any of the three, or I think Martin's got to go very soon, uh, if you want to ask a question of one of them, feel feel free. We, we'll pick it up in the chat and they can think. But while we're waiting for that, um, 
Well, just just can I say something quick, Luke? Because I yeah. know you've taken some grief for this as well. I know that you've opened this up. I know all three of us tonight are independent prospective councillors, but I'd encourage everybody to come on and engage with you. I mean, I've known you for a long time, not closely, but I've known you. And all I'd say, if anybody's watching this, they're thinking, oh, there, there he's going. Take up this offer. Talk to Luke. You know, don't let this just be a platform for independent candidates to, to batter you. Whoever you are out there, if you're standing, Luke's a genuine guy. He will he will question you. He'll question all of us. Come and stand yeah. on this platform and 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 take it forward. Don't <laughs> Luke. You can invite me back any week you want. Yeah. But I would really okay. hope that you would have people who want to come and do this because this is in, this is engaging with the public. This yeah. is the new well, modern way of electioneering. This is this is how it is. I I would love once everything is confirmed of who's standing in that, to bring on the leader. I'd love Hugh David here. Uh, I can't remember his last uh, his first name. Voicey, Matthew Voicey, um, the leader of the Ply Cymru, uh, Cheryl Green as well, and Alex Williams, because he's the current leader of the Independent Party opposition at the moment. And let them come on here and make their cases of why people should elect them and have a good discussion about how things can how things could be better in that way but i know labor won't because every labor council i have messaged last time well all ignored me by one who said no because i'm affiliated with bci i said it's nothing to do with that, I think. and i questioned you steve on and Martin as well on what considered toxic politics by them, and you were happy to talk. I spoke to Tom Gifford, the Tory um, MS and councillor in Brackler, and he was. Oh, happy and in, to fairness talk. To Tom, in fairness to Tom, Luke, he came on yeah. and he took what, what what you gave him, you know. Uh, you yeah. know I, I don't yeah. think we see eye to eye particularly, but but credit where it's due, you know. Yeah, he, he said, ask me anything you want. And I did. I asked because there had been a recent vote where him and the Tories had um, voted against or abstained on a vote to do with school meals and the £20 uh, universal credit that was going away. And I asked him about it and he was fine and fair enough. And he answered it the way he wanted to answer it. And it was Right. And that's all I'll do. I'll ask you questions. I'll maybe push you a little bit on things. Um, I I do have one interview lined up this week, and he's in the chat, Tim Thomas. I've seen him come up. He's agreed to do a chat on Wednesday. We just have to work out a time, which is great. Can you, so can you, can you ask him why he keeps continuing to grow a beard? He looks much better clean-shaven. <laughs> I will. I will. <laughs> Unless he answers it here in the chat. <laughs> Um, and yes, I agree with you, Phil Pickering. We should have spent that 50k on grassroots sports in Bridge End, mm -hmm. on facilities or helping young sports or, or uh, grassroots sports. I think that was a, I think that should be the thing we focus on grassroots rather than a scattergun approach to tourism. Have a focus that, approach to tourism. That's a that's a vanity. That's that's a vanity thing, Luke. That yeah. that. That tournament doesn't need fifty thousand pounds from Bridgend County Borough Council. It's to no. say that they're involved in some big thing. The, the prize fund of that is one and a half million pounds. That fifty thousand um, pounds could have come from a sponsor. Yeah, it should. I, I don't been. disagree necessarily. I don't disagree necessarily. I think my big bugbear with it is where does it fit into the strategy? Show no. me the link between that fifty thousand to 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 something else, and and you can't. It's just they've someone's written in and asked for some money. And they've gone, oh yeah, yeah, okay. Um, I'm not saying this. I'm not saying they agree or disagree with it. My problem is it doesn't. Where, where does it fit in? You know? No. Anyway, sorry. Okay. We're coming to the end now. As I said, I've got Tim Thomas coming up this week. Um, I'm hoping to get maybe one or two others. I will get Leanne on her own to do an interview um but i'm looking to do live video every some sunday now and i hope to bring on other councillors i don't care what party you are we want to hear your opinions that's what this platform is for to hear your opinions and how you can convince people to trust you and 
follow you to give you a vote. So let me just thank all of my guests, Stephen Bledsoe, Leanne Dahand, I got it wrong again, I know. I'll answer to anything, Luke, so <laughs> I'm very amenable. Um, what did it say on your Take That membership card? That's the thing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the only one who wasn't a member of Take That or Spice Girls. <laughs> and to Martin Williams, I'll see. Thank you all for tuning in. Uh, we've been up between six and nine all evening. It's a good start, I believe. Um, don't forget to subscribe, leave a like, and I'll see you all again next week. Thank you very much. Bye. Thanks for having me, Luke. Thank you, Luke. Bye bye. Thanks,